Gold and silver and platinum are the favorite uh, assets to hold in the current inflationary environment. The dollar will not vanish and just disappear, but uh, more and more trade and more and more transactions will occur outside the US dollar. And this is one reason I recommend investors to have money outside the dollar region. And the dollar region includes, of course, the US, the UK, then uh, the Vogue members, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and so forth. So I would have money outside these jurisdictions. Gold and silver and platinum are the favorite uh, assets to hold in the current inflationary environment. But I have to say that the investment community, they find these precious metals to be not sexy enough. They prefer to have something that moves in a day by 20%, like stocks, like uh, uni unicorns or the bags and so forth, and meme stocks and stocks with the large short positions and crypto and so forth. They love things that have a potential to go up 20% in one day. And gold and silver and platinum don't uh, share that uh, kind of uh, quality. But if you want to look realistically, in 1970, you could buy an ounce of gold for $35. It's now over 1900 Well, in my opinion, it's kept up with inflation reasonably well. So I hold gold, of course. Now, someone else may say, I prefer real estate. Well, in inflationary times, uh, it also performs well until the dumb government officials that we have today will decide to introduce rent control. And about the BRICS currencies, um, I suppose more and more trade will occur between countries and countries, and they will settle the trade in uh, non-US dollar currencies. But since you ask, I see a big opportunity in the stock of some emerging markets. First of all, the Latin American markets, Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, Peru, Chile, and so forth. Uh, because in World War III, and that is not my view, but some of my educated friends, they think that World War III has begun. Latin America would be a little bit aside. The war would be fought between Russia, China, and the US and Europe, and so forth. Though in that scenario, you want to have some money in Latin America. I also like to point out that in Asia, we have some very depressed markets, including Pakistan. And there are some stocks in Indonesia that are cheap in Malaysia, in Thailand, and Vietnam and at the recent Barron's Roundtable. Not one of the 10 panel, uh, panelists mentioned Chinese stocks. Not one or a name in Hong Kong. These, some of these stocks are very inexpensive. That's where I would look at and not worry too much about whether the BRICS will have uh, their own currency or not. I would just invest some money outside of the US dollar. Well, in the US, you know, uh, someone could argue, okay, the Fed prints money, the dollar goes down, but the stock market goes up. So the rich people don't care. Uh, the stock market, uh, say the AI-related stocks have gone up much more than the dollar depreciation. Other stocks didn't go up this much. This is the, the difficulty with, with participating in an inflationary environment. That inflation doesn't touch the entire price level equally and everything goes up equally. No, some things go up here and then they go up there and so forth. So you have to, to kind of trade this inflation accordingly. I think it's quite difficult to do it for most people. That's why I'm diversified yeah. and at all times diversified. I have some dollars, but also non-dollar currencies. I have investments mostly outside the US. We've seen it many times. I mean, the Romans had a global currency in during the empire and then it vanished. But uh, there's still the Italian lira. <laughs> <laughs> the Spanish had a global currency, a reserve currency, and the British, until after the First World War, the British pound was really the global currency, and then the dollar came up, especially after the Second World War.